In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the node editor inside of Maya. It allows artists and technical directors to easily create, edit, and debug node networks. Drag and drop connection editing reduces dependency on the connection editor, enabling nodes to be rewired in a more intuitive environment. For the first example, we're going to graph the input-output nodes of this character's waste into the node editor. Notice that the nodes, as well as their connections, are color-coded, giving you a visual representation as to the type of data that you're working with. The node names appear above the nodes so that even when you compress the nodes down to a very small view, they're still easily readable. When working with the node names, we can use a hotkey to switch between different display types. Right now, we're currently showing the node name. If I hit the hotkey 5, I've displayed the type of node. If I hit 5 one more time, I basically hide all the naming and I'm left with just a visual flow of the dependency graph inside of our node. So the next thing that we want to do is look at how we can use the node editor to generate shaders. I'll go ahead and I'll pick a piece of geometry that I want to begin working with and just use our marker menu to graph that material. So you can see here that we have a simple blend material and a shader group associated with it. So I know that I want to have a diffuse channel and a reflection channel piped into this piece of geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just drag those guys down into, uh, into our node editor. So we'll grab this kind of reflection ball and we'll grab this diffuse. We'll put that guy over here and kind of snap those guys to the grid really quickly. So right now we're looking at the nodes in their most compressed view. When working in the node editor, we can always display the nodes at multiple different levels, giving you more or less information. This can be done either with hotkeys or by using the toggle switches on top of the toolbar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the muffler and the shading group and we're going to switch their node view from being the compressed view to showing their current attributes, the current connection. So out color is currently connected to the surface shader. If we hit the three key, it shows the default list of connections. If you hit the four key, it shows all the possible connections on the input side and the output side of a given node. Now, obviously we don't really want to see all that information. So we'll go back to our compressed view. Let's go ahead and increase the size of this shader ball too. So it's a little easier to see what's going on with that guy. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is how we can make connections between the different nodes. We can either do this in the compressed view or the expanded view, and the workflow is very similar for both. All you have to do is go and click on the output side of a given node, select the attribute that you want to get, so in this example we'll get out color, and then go to the input side of the node you want to pipe that information into. Again, we'll just shove it into color. So that's, that's basically one way of working with the compressed nodes. The next view that we're going to look at is let's expand these guys out to show all the lists here, is how we can make connections in the more expanded view. So let's go ahead and delete that. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab the out color, and again we're going to pipe it to in color, but I want you to notice what happens when I get this node close to the input side of the muffler. It goes ahead and it grays out the attributes that this file or this data type can't go into. It's a vector file or data type, so it's got X, Y, and Z information or RGB information, so it can't go into a float slider. If I get close to incandescence, it'll try to snap to it, or if I get close to color, it'll try to snap to it to make that connection. Another thing that's kind of nice about the node editor is if you have a node that's maybe a float and it's going into a compound node, so something like color that's a compound of red, green, and blue, if you just kind of hover that close to it, it grays out at first, but Maya's smart enough to think, all right, well, maybe I should expand that out so that you can get in there and make that connection. So, you know, maybe we'll pipe the red to the blue. Now, obviously, that's not what we want to do. Let's go ahead and get this guy back to just being sort of shoved into the color there. So let's compress that guy back down. So the next thing that we want to do is begin working with reflections on this object. So I've got this reflection uh, texture map in my scene, and whenever you're working with reflection texture maps inside of Maya, sort of uh, cubic environment maps or, or ball environment maps or spherical maps, they need to pipe through an environment node. Now luckily I've already used this reflection texture in my scene in a couple different places, so I've already got that environment node in there. It's just not currently shown in my graph. So the first thing we want to do is basically display the output connections of this shader. So if I just go to my output connections and just hold down my shift key when I click that guy, you can see that it basically went and added to my graph the output connections that this, this guy has. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ball and we're going to take its out color and we're going to shove that into reflected color. Oops, let's do that one more time. So now we've got that guy piped into the reflected color. It looks pretty good. You can see that we now have sort of a chrome looking muffler. 
So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the node editor to start to create some new nodes that don't exist in the scene to modify the way that reflection looks. I want to have sort of a Fresnel effect happening. I want it to drop off and, and sort of be reflected on the edges but not reflected in the center of the object. So to do that, we're going to grab a sampler info node. All I have to do is hit the tab key to begin creating new nodes. Start typing out what I want to get. Let's uh, type in sampler. So. We'll grab that sampler info node. So we've got the sampler info node. We want to have that type piped into reflectivity. The problem with this is reflectivity isn't part of my default list. So we're going to have to go grab this node, expand it out to the full list, and trying to find reflectivity, is, it's just going to be hard. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter out what is being displayed in that list to something that's a little bit easier to see. So we'll go in here and we'll just grab the Facing ratio on this guy. We'll look at the attributes that this has. We'll grab the facing ratio and we'll put that to reflectivity. So as soon as I do that, you can see that that reflection changed, but it's not really giving me the effect that I want. So we need to modify what this facing ratio is providing. Right now it's providing a zero to one value that's just linear from the normals facing the camera to the normals facing away from the camera. So to modify that, I'm going to pass it through a ramp. So again, we'll hit the tab key to create a new node. We'll start typing ramp. I'm going to create a ramp texture. Now this ramp texture, I don't need the texture placement node for that because we're just going to be using the ramp as a, as a modifier. We're, this is a V chord ramp by default. So what we want to do is we want to take that facing ratio and we want to have it pipe into the V chord of, uh, of this ramp. So again, if I use the V key to filter down what we're seeing there, we'll grab that facing ratio. Notice that it's going to expand out that so that I can get to that V chord for me nice automatically. Sort of push that guy over there. Now we'll grab the out color for this guy. So let's just grab one of the attributes, just out red. Throw that into the reflectivity slot. Oops, looks like I missed my connection there. So we've got the out red flowing into that reflectivity. So you can see that it looks a little bit different. We'll jump into this ramp. We'll just kind of make uh, the bottom white and the top black. And now I can use this ramp to really start to adjust you know, where are my reflections at? What's it going to look like? Is it going to be glancing? Is it going to be, uh, you know, add a little bit more in there? So it's sort of giving me this really nice sort of cool Fresnel look up on that guy. So let's go ahead and just clean up our display. We'll deselect everything. We'll hit the one key to basically compress everything down to its lowest view. We'll re, uh, we'll re graph that. And that's just a really quick example of how we can use the node editor inside of Maya combined all of these tools to get a very great, fast, productive user experience when working with complex nodes inside of Maya.